the beautiful sport of football. You feel it, I feel it. There's a reason why we are all addicted to watching a group of men kick a ball into an empty net. However, year and year, we keep coming back and indulge ourselves in many different types of football content, if it be books, if it be TV shows, series, films, and any way that we can play the sport with our feet or with our hands, with a controller. And this presents to us video games. The art of producing a video game is something that should not be underestimated. It is a project that you and a team puts your passion into one collective aim. And that is something that is beautiful in itself. When you play a video game that really speaks to you and you have a feeling towards and nostalgia towards that you think that you are really experiencing something great. When I think of this, I think of Skyrim, games that blew my mind of what was possible and it made me think of a greater time. And when I think of these games to this day, I've got fond memories for. However, sadly, when it comes to a sports video game, there is a leech that attaches itself to this type of franchise. And that leech is called Yearly Cycles. Now, to be fair, let's give some credit. Unlike Call of Duty, where they have no real reason to create a yearly cycle game every year because they don't have an actual timeline and calendar to base their game upon. So they really have no excuse of why they rush out games in a manner that they do. However, when it comes to sports games, there is a reason why, and that is based on obviously seasons. The new seasons has a new roster of players with transfers coming in and out, new kits, new teams being promoted and relegated. So it does make sense. However, the challenges comes from that alone, a yearly cycle for a game studio is really no time at all. Let's play a game, okay? Name me as many football games as you can. Name me. Just literally think about them right now. And I will give you mine, okay? Are you are you doing it? Okay. Three, two, one. Stop. How many games have you just thought of in the last 10, 15 seconds? How many? Five? six maybe ten and by the way i'm thinking of actual game franchises and not to say oh i think of fifa 12 13 14 15 no actual full-blown different games most of you would think of the main three of course being fifa pro evolution soccer pez or football manager some may go for a different route of going for championship manager or lma manager different managerial games maybe mobile games maybe be thinking of the likes of football chairman or top 11 but when you really think about it in the world of football which is a behemoth of a sport there really isn't any options at all when you really think about it if you want a manager game you play fm and that's really it if you play a mobile game new star soccer top 11 there's a few varieties there but when it comes to playing on console there's really only two pez and fifa and fifa massively outweighs pez so here lies fifa the king of football and what i will get into is why eafc 24 is everything wrong with modern fifa tell me down below your thoughts on eafc or the FIFA franchise as a whole and the direction that they've gone down? Do you play it more? Do you play it less? Tell me your thoughts down below. Smash a like button on the video. Let's try to hit 4,000 likes and also subscribe if you're new. Thank you for all the love on the channel and let's get into it. To truly understand the impact of the last few weeks, months, years of the FIFA cycle, you've got to understand the past and why people see and feel the way that they do. The humble beginnings of FIFA back in 1993 were simply just controlling a player 
was seen as extraordinary, where simply seeing the same kits, the same colours, the same name of the team that you support is in or by itself a minor miracle. And progressing through all the years from 1993, international soccer, to FIFA 98, to FIFA all three, to FIFA all seven, the game progressed leaps and bounds. And there was a beating heart to the game, a studio that had a passion, that innovated in ways that no one even asked for, but appreciated nonetheless to those that really delved deep into it. And that can be seen across all these FIFAs. For example, back in FIFA 07, there was a bonus hub. This was called EA Sports Extras, and you got three different tabs here. You got Interactive Leagues, which goes into a much more cinematic way of introducing the game, not too intense. Then you got the Season Preview, where you got a sort of show, where you can actually go and see a preview for the upcoming season for the leagues that they are a license with. So predominantly the Premier League and also the Bundesliga, and even more cooler is the season highlights where, again, for the Premier League and Bundesliga, you got a highlight reel of about 4-5 or five minutes about what happened the previous year. Little things like this may not matter to you, but to people like me and to many others, it showed something. It showed that they cared because they had no reason to add this, this wasn't a thing that people asked for, some people probably never knew it was even there, but it added some character to the game, one that I for one appreciate. And there's many more examples like this. For example, FIFA 06, do you remember something called EA Sports Retro? Do you have any idea? Because I do, and so do many more people. They had a memorable moments hub where it went for the top 10 most memorable moments in the last season. You also had something really cool called FIFA Games Retrospective, where you actually went and looked back on the previous FIFA games before that, which again, you had no reason for this, but they gave it to you nonetheless. And also player bios, where it gave you an actual biography of many players that they have across the game. Usually licensed or partnered players that they have. So it gives you a bit more of an insight into the players of the world. Something that you don't get in the current FIFA game. Something that, again, is not asked for, but is appreciated. And again, EA Sports Extras, where again they had the season preview and the season highlights. And something pretty cool is that they also had an exclusive... Samuel Eto'o interview where he joined Barcelona, who I imagine they had a license with, and it gave you a, a, an exclusive insight into Samuel Eto'o, and he was on your screen. You actually can talk to him. Again, remember, it's 2006. It wasn't really easy to access things such as interviews with players back in these days. It felt really personal. It felt really inclusive that you felt like you were a part of something, and that is gone now. I did a video about two years ago titled FIFA's Complicated History of Removed Features. This did quite well and I was stunned to find out that I got 17 minutes out of content that no longer is available on the game. Here are just some examples of what I got from it. Do you remember such thing as a UEFA Champions League game? Well, this was a thing back in the 2000s that, of course, no longer does exist. However, there were some things in those games that they could well and truly do now, but simply don't want to. For example, do you remember there was such thing as a quiz? Again, nothing too intense, but a little quizzing game that you can test your football knowledge. This is something that is really simple to add, but it's not been brought back. What about a collection book? They had a collection book back in the UEFA Champions League games. Really cool, really innovative, and something that only makes sense for a game mode such as FIFA Ultimate Team. Something that can keep people interested and maybe can earn some rewards on collecting players across different leagues or different nations or different clubs. Something that has not been brought back. Things like this are innovative that they've not bothered to bring back for whatever reason. 
What about Match Day Live that was brought out back in FIFA 14, 15, 16, where you can go and play alongside the real life Premier League or any sort of licensed league that you prefer, and you can play alongside what's happening in real life with the current updated teams, with the updated form, and each week, this is what I did, I played with Burnley week by week across the 14-15 season to see how I would do, because that's our next game and I, was, I, I really enjoyed it. Again, not brought back. What about career mode? What about internal memos? Where after games, this was back in FIFA 06 or 05, that after the games you had some questions from journalists, for example, where you go and answer back some pretty detailed answers that they ask you. It actually made a difference in terms of how you were perceived by your fan base. Again, for whatever reason, is not there. I'm removed by generic interviews that really doesn't make any difference. What about XP, where you can actually have a total match XP, so when you go and play a match, if they have a good match, then you see how much XP they gained, and again, the more that they gain, the more that you can see them improve. So it adds much more of a sort of satisfaction. For example, the Youth Academy, you actually had an expected growth curve where you can see them progress expectedly year by year. Nowadays, there's no curve at all. There's no graph of what you expect them to be. It's just kind of random. What about the EA Sports catalog? Something as simple as this that was on the menu and you can go and unlock different retro kits, different celebrations, different balls and boots and even for Korean more different unlocks that you can have of a, a bunch of money or a brand new wonder kid in your system. Things like this that you could actually have some points that you earn by playing the game to improve your experience. Again, not in the game and all these retro kits are no longer available for no reason. What I just gave you is a variety of features that was not asked for but was given to you because they wanted to because they felt like actually improving the game for you and giving you little features that you didn't expect and as i said before i appreciate this has been cut from the modern fifa cycle because what they care about is what makes the most money and adding some new retro kits doesn't make you more money. By adding a few interviews as a bonus feature, doesn't make you more money. And that is the entire problem of modern FIFA. And EAFC is a shining example of that. I think now it's time for chapter two. It is truly sad to see where it appears from the outside that a large chunk of the community have entered a state of apathy where their interest in the game and their anger is no longer there. They no longer really care to complain because they all know that nothing will ever change. And that is a dangerous place to be in because there's one thing complaining about it. However, there's a different thing on actually taking part in it yourself. What I mean by this is, there's no real competitors. There's no real other football games that you can play. Yes, there's PES. However, there is a huge difference on how PES plays. That is a gap that many people are sadly not willing to cross that bridge because of people complaining of how modern FIFA is seen as too realistic. It's too slow. However, if you think that modern FIFA is too slow, then you absolutely will not stand Pez, as that is the king of simulation football. How about Football Manager? Well, it is a fantastic game for me, uh, a better football game to put your time into. However, it is not the same. You are not scratching that same itch of scoring a 90 minute winner, of actually using a Kylian Mbappe and feeling the pace and the the power of a player of that ability, you don't get the same satisfaction that you would get while playing a management game. So with FIFA, you are alone. You really have no nothing else to actually put your time into. 
if you want to play a football game and feel what it's like to actually use these incredible players and your players that you know and love. I'm a Burnley fan. The idea of playing at Turf Moor with my players that I watch week in week out and try to replicate what they do in real life is really cool. And again, I can't really do it in any other game other than FIFA. If you are a football fan and you've absolutely played with a Lionel Messi on FIFA and had a, a feeling of satisfaction when you drift past one player and the other and it is addictive because you get instant feedback of success and it's consistent and you want to try to replicate that again and again. Back in the old FIFAs, they had some character to them that was unique to one another. If I said to you, FIFA 12, what would you think? We would possibly all think of the same three things. For example, you would possibly all think of the menu of you being in an arena with a player that you pick if it's a, a Wayne Rooney or a Kaka or a Ronaldo or a Messi or a Ronaldinho and you playing in the arena. I mean, just a picture of the arena is iconic in itself. However, this is something that is not number one really in the game or number two appreciated. You would maybe also think about a type of card in FIFA, such as Brazilvers, where so many iconic players was incredible and satisfying to use, such as Michael Liete or Marlos or about Moraes. Moraes? I can't even say his name. How about the left back? Aziviero? It's just some random left back from Brazil, but I remember it because he was just insane to use. Or how about Felipe Coutinho? Or Wallison? Or how about El Shirari? The skills in this game, the long shots, the finesse shots, incredibly OP to use. And I can think of FIFA 12 and we can possibly all think of the same two free things. How about FIFA 15? What do you think of? Well, I think about the soundtrack. The soundtrack for 15 for me is potentially the best there ever was. I loved the look of that game, the kind of dark green pitch with the orange kind of flashes all over the place. I really liked that kind of spinning wheel when you open a pack I thought was really smart and the entire experience felt really, really tight and compact. I think one part of it that really helped was that this was the first FIFA that you had the actual Premier League license. So remember when you played a game of FIFA back in FIFA 15 with a Premier League team, you had the Premier League cinematics before the game, the lineups, the scoreboard, and it was like, wow, this is a huge step in the right direction. And you felt a, a sense of surprise. FIFA stopped surprising you. They stopped adding these things that you were surprised by and felt that was really cool. And even though technology has really progressed in the last couple of years, the progression of innovation has diminished monstrously. If I play you some gameplay of FIFA 21, FIFA 22, FIFA 23, and EAFC 24, can you actually tell a difference? I'm gonna play some gameplay footage now. If you try and tell me what FIFA this is, you probably won't actually be able to tell instantly. The only way you can tell is potentially the kits and you would know what exact year that kit is. And maybe on the scoreboard, it may say somewhere the type of FIFA it is. But in terms of the graphics itself, I play a game of foot champs from FIFA 23 to 21. Graphically, it's pretty much the same. This same concept can be found in many parts of the game. For example, the menu between 21, 22, 23, all the other FIFAs prior, where the actual menu across career mode or FET felt all the same. Now, of course, EAFC has had a revamp, but it felt like their hand was forced because of the name change. However, nonetheless, the menu change that they've implemented still feels generic as if it really doesn't represent this game at all for example it sounds really dumb but what's the color of the game 
Again, really dumb, really picky. But if I say the yellow FIFA, you all think of FIFA 17. If I think of the silver FIFA, you may think of FIFA 30 because of the silver ball and the menus and it had this kind of chrome effect. You remember it. If I think of the red FIFA, you may think of FIFA 12 because of Wayne Rooney and the, the graphics that was on there. If I say the blue FIFA, you may think of FIFA 19 because of the, uh, I think, because of the Champions League. The pink FIFA is obviously FIFA 20, so on and so forth. There's a kind of theme with it. There's nothing on this. I don't even know what to even call it. It is almost like they gave up with their willingness to impress you or their willingness to surprise you and the effort that they have goes into one thing. But before we get into Ultimate Team, let's get into what I find to be the soul-destroying part of FIFA and why so many people simply don't care. And that is, what was the beating heart? Career Mode. The fall of Career Mode is one that is disheartening for almost everyone involved if you are a career mode player at any time period back in the day this was it you can play kickoff with your friends at home but most of your time is all spent in career mode with any club that you pick typically your own trying to make them the best they can possibly be back in the day you had a sponsorship contract when you started the game back in the day you were able to create a team in a creation center with many different players and to just do whatever you wanted. Make your own kits, make your own badges using the EA facilities of EA Creation Center. How about EA Game Face? You can actually make whatever face that you want using the EA features. What about Player Manager? That's no longer really a thing. How about the social feed that was on Journey? What about Affinity? You got your board Affinity, you've got your job security, You've got your fan security, your fan affinity as well. That's no longer really there. How about something simple? And this is a really like stupid thing to say, but I want to see the league table instantly and not in a sort of seeing eight teams at once. I find it really annoying. Ticket prices, you can improve them. Seeing your XP per game. How about when you get sacked from a team and you actually have choice of who you want to go to next. Nowadays, you are forced to only one. So if I am at Burnley and I get sacked from Burnley, I only have really a Luton Town to really go to or Sheffield United. I'd never get any of her options if I want to stick with the same save. How about having coaches? Coaches has been put into this new game. However, such things as medical staff or daily managers still has not been brought back. What about glitches? Glitches that has been on FIFA for the last couple of years and have never been improved on. For example, the main annoyance that I find is when you are playing against a team like Man City and they are playing teams from the B or C team for no reason. You could play a very important game against Arsenal and they're playing players that you've never heard of before. These aren't random players from other leagues, these are youth players that they're for some reason playing against you. What about fitness glitches? For example, if you get injured in a European game, they will stay on low fitness till the next time you play in a European game. So if you get knocked out, for example, and you get an injury, they are no longer usable until the next season. The progression system is predictable and boring for the most part. You can have a player on the bench and they will always improve to their expected potential despite how good or how bad they actually play. Also, I do find it a bit ridiculous how easy a lot of players do get, how easy it is to actually improve them to the top rating. Sometimes you can play a career mode and most of your team are 92, 93 rated minimum, and you're not even using players that are indeed that good. For example, Harvey Barnes could be 94 rated, and you don't really know why. Korean mode has been taking a hit year by year since FIFA 17, which is exactly where they introduced SBCs, foot champions, and of course the esports scene. Now, I could do an entire video about the esports scene on its own, as I think that is worthy of doing a video on, and especially 
how it has gone backwards since the potential that it showed back in this era as it really should have been something incredible and something that should keep players involved and interested for a longer period of time. However, for whatever reasons that I will go into on a later date, it is lacking in many areas. I do feel like the journey has to be spoken about here, mainly because the journey is, for me, the last hurrah of EA innovating and putting some real effort into the game. However, I don't know how well it is placed, as from the outside it can be seen as purely just a way to showcase their sponsorships, because since the first one, the innovation really stopped right there. I remember well back in the summer of 2016 where they launched the trailer of The Journey, which was mind-blowing. I mean, I can't begin to tell you exactly how many years the FIFA community was begging for a game more similar to 2K My Player, where you're having an actual storyline of actually going to be able to go within an actual club, be behind the scenes, be on the training ground, interact with the players, interact with the manager, the, the coaches, and feel like you are actually part of a club, and see your player that you create go through the ranks of a football team, becoming a player which is one of the best in the world, and you got a monologue and a storyline to go alongside with you. And we kind of got that, but not at the same time. In FIFA 17, we had Alex Hunter, who was a young up-and-coming talent that had a trial and then had a offer from a variety of different clubs, well, every club in Premier League, and then what happened is typically you was not good enough and then had to go on loan, which you picked the top three sides in the championship, which were Norwich, Newcastle, and Aston Villa. From then, you played and then came back from your loan and then you completed the rest of the season for your club typically doing well in the league and if you kept on track you would end up in the FA Cup final where you were going and win it. There was also some guy called Gareth Walker which I think tried to make you really care about beating him however you, you kind of didn't. They clearly put a lot of effort into this and the game was something that no one really asked for and I do appreciate it and 17 I did play it and I did quite enjoy it however in 18 I kind of lost my way with it as it instantly forced you to play in the MLS and leave the team that you wanted to play for for example I want to play with Burnley and it forced you to go away from Burnley to the MLS to LA Galaxy and then you played over there again I didn't really care so I didn't really want to play in the MLS because that's not what I wanted to do. From then, you got the option of Bayern Munich or Atletico Madrid or PSG. And then you continued from there. In the 19, it put much more of an emphasis of playing as three different heroes, which was Williams, Hunter and Kim Hunter. If you did play these, and especially 19, then tell me down below. I don't think a lot of people did. So for this next chapter, we are going to go into something that I know you have been waiting for the entire time, and that is Ultimate Team. Jesus Christ, yeah, that thing. So, um, the title of EAFC 24 is Everything Wrong with Modern FIFA, can really be also said for modern gaming and the scope of modern gaming as a complete whole. So, the title EAFC 24 is Everything everything wrong with modern FIFA can also be said as everything wrong with modern gaming. Okay, Ultimate Team in the most simplest terms is a very lucrative battle pass. Everything that you earn is very carefully organized and strategically placed just for you to keep entertained for the longest period of time without realizing that you are really doing nothing that helps anything. Let me explain. When was the last time that you played FIFA just to play a game of FIFA? No playing foot champs, no doing objectives just to get a card done. Just play the game for no real reason. Just play it because you wanted to. No rewards on the line, nothing on the line, 
I repeat, nothing on the line. You're not doing some stupid objective for some uh, uh, stupid card that you're never even going to use because you got a decent rating. Just play the game. I guarantee a chunk of you, and I mean a good chunk, cannot even really answer that. Now, I know some may lie and say, oh, I just play, f I just play, um, you know, um, online um, seasons, you know, because that's something that people just do. But are you sure about that? Because the last time I checked about seasons, Unless if you don't play the game like at all, it's a non-stop sweat fest. Uh, if you reach a division which is actually at your level. My main emphasis on this video is kind of breaking down what FIFA was and what it is now. When you played FIFA back in the day, 12, 13, 14, of course nostalgia does play a factor in it. And hey, you may be young and you may be enjoying the game now because this is your game that you grew up with. So I completely understand that. However, we didn't have objectives or SBCs or foot champions. We had 15,000 coins as a reward for winning Division 1, which I think after 10 games, I think you had to win at least 7, I believe, or win 8. I think 7 to um, win the title. I think it's 21 points. That's what you had to get. So, I don't know, 6 wins and 3 draws to win the division. And that was it. 15k coins. I mean, people would literally just have... I mean, Twitter would explode if that was the case nowadays. By watching and listening to quite a few content creators, people that I trust in the scene to give their opinion and to give their honest thoughts in the game, a lot of them all fall under the same category of completely sick and tired and bored of playing this game. And I don't blame them, especially if you're a content creator and you are relying on content and you're... Oh god, content. I, okay, let's talk about content. I hate the word content. Content is pretty much, in my opinion, what has kind of killed this game for a lot of people. Without content, n what would people do? They would actually need to find out interesting ways to, to play the game without, um, well, not playing the game. And this is, by the way, of the complete fault of EA Sports. It wasn't always like this. However, in the last couple of years, they have really upped the ante of content and making SBCs a necessity to ensure that you keep coming back on the game at 6 o'clock every day UK time. However, if there is no content that is exciting for you, then you're left doing nothing again and just simply waiting until the next time for Champions Opens. But, but you're not playing for Champions to get a good reward. You don't really care because you don't expect anything. You're just hoping to get some new cards into your club, some decent high rated, to then go put into the SBCs that you actually want. Question, very important question here, right? Do you care anymore? Like, do you actually care? Like, question. Again, a question instead of a question. When was the last time you packed a player that you actually was really excited about? Because I swear I see these people pack icons and barely even flinch. I packed a, a Gareth Bale back in FIFA 15 and I screamed my entire street to the ground. Their entire backing goes into Ultimate Team because that makes the money, which again makes sense, but it's still very annoying. Ever since FIFA 17, there's really been nothing huge added to the game. There's been objectives that are also neat, so I guess I can add that in. Other than that, not much has been really changed much to the general FIFA cycle since I wanna say FIFA 19. As my own personal annoyance, bring back League SBCs. Just the normal League SBCs from back in FIFA 18, 19. I'm, I'm begging you, okay? FIFA 17, I'm begging you, EA. Just bring back League SBCs. Who cares if you think that people get too much too fast? They already do. So, are you ready? The next chapter. Do you like some cheap and reliable coins? For this next chapter, we're going to be focusing on gambling. And I have done an entire video in depth, like bar on bar into the details for about 40, 50 minutes about why I persist gambling in FIFA and how I believe they've aimed and how I believe that they've completely targeted young children and impressionable teens to invest a ridiculous amount of money into this video game. 
I, th I genuinely think people now don't even open packs for the sake of actually wanting to get a good player. People's expectations, because for some reason, I don't know why, but in the sports community, so FIFA or NBA, Madden, okay, we are stupid and we are pushovers. I don't know why this has been really ingrained into us, but we are the biggest pushovers in the entire gaming community. I mean, please, take a step out of the sports world of gaming and look from the perspective of every other community out there. They laugh at us. They laugh at people that buys any EA products for a matter, but especially the sports games. They know that we buy a game that is very much the same product with the same tagline, so the same fancy um, PR words to make it sound different and spicy each year. But as we all know, it's simply a reskin of a roster update and they sell us it for full price. And everything that we've earned from the previous year gets reset back down to square one. You are old and you have earned nothing. This year, however, EA have really upped the ante of their store packs. And they've done this on purpose because they've intertwined this perfectly with the SBCs and how the game runs. They don't want you to get too many cool things from rewards. Yes, foot champs, you do get a healthy amount of packs, which is really nice, I guess, if you are a, a person that is definitely more of a casual. However, if you're someone that is a bit more intense, it is never enough. And of course, not everyone has that much time, which is completely understandable. However, EA relies on four letters, F-O-M-O, FOMO, fear of missing out. That is the heartbeat of FIFA, where every SBC, every pack comes with a fear of missing out. I could have got someone really good. 99.9% of the times, you get the second or third worst player from that promo. However, you had to spin the wheel, otherwise you just never know. EA have done EA things and have took advantage of this glorious opportunity of getting around calling it gambling. Typically in other FIFAs you have a 100k pack or a 125k pack or a 50k pack and it has a very vague amount of cards in that pack including it's got 24 rare gold items but it's no guaranteed of anything it's a complete random spin. However now they've got these incredible promo packs that only gets more and more insane each week we go into the game. For example, this week we have got a 500k pack. Let me let let me. I'm sorry. I I know it's crazy, right? This sounds like a a real to show FIFA 15 pack like mod video, right? A 500k pack. This sounds like a pack that you would open for funsies on Foothead, right? That's not a real thing because it would never be a real thing. Back in the day, having a and a pack which has a guaranteed legend card or a guaranteed promo card is something that is only available on like a, a really bad FIFA style like mobile games. Now it's a real thing. 500,000 coins or 3,500 fuel points, which is about, I want to say, 28 pounds or 30 pounds. Get, guess when this was supposed to be like in July, right? It has to be in at least like April. You know, around team of the season, surely. November. November. The game has not been out for two This is why I can't take the game seriously. The entire idea of building your ultimate team and having that journey feels so uh, worthless now. It's super easy to get an insane team. And, and I'm not even speaking about in July or May or March where you would, it would make more sense because by then the community may be a bit drained of the kind of, you know, RTG style. They just want to have some fun. This is in literally the month of October and November that there's these insane packs that they are dropping. What do you think is going to happen later on? And again, there'll be a 1 million coin pack for team of the year guaranteed there'll be a guaranteed team of the year pack and this is not gambling now because they tell you you guarantee these players you guarantee these players with these same ratings so this isn't gambling they've gotten away with it it's all untradeable of course so you don't actually really own it properly you can't sell them if you get anything bad you're stuck with it now they're trying to normalize that and they have
congratulations. If you spend 550k on a pack and I think you are stupid, you have no control of the money that you earn and you should not be allowed to have that money. The content creators, however, will simply eat this up because it is simple and easy content and they have no other ideas. But hey, in one way, at least, it's technically not gambling because you get what you are told you're gonna get. Uh, next chapter here. Ah, okay, let's talk about esports. It's a real job, Dad. Have you ever thought about being a professional FIFA player? You haven't, have you? Maybe because you suck. Sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry, please don't take that offensive. I, I'm not that good either. I actually tried. I actually tried to be a, a FIFA pro player, and I got knocked out in the first round. The good old days of FIFA 9. 19 e Premier League at Burnley. I was playing at Turf Moor. I was so excited. I was really confident actually of doing well, at least making the semis, and I got knocked out in the first round. So I um, I was kind of around, so I got asked to commentate over the event, and I did. So at least I got a free shirt. Back in FIFA 17, there was an actual incredible, like, lovely bit of hype around esports beforehand. Back in the day, there was only really the Gfinity Player Like a Legend tournaments, or like Virgin Gaming, or um, the FIWC, of course, the FIFA Interactive World Cup. Um, of course, something that I was quite well aware of because I... I was quite serious about FIFA and my brother was also pretty good at FIFA too. He actually competed at some of these events. So in 2016 when they introduced foot champions and he introduced an actual foot FIFA esports circuit, it's like wow, okay, this has to be a success. I mean it's football. How can you fail at this? And it did do quite well. The freshness, it was very exciting to see these glorious events and it was like this is the future this has to be the greatest esport possible and it's kind of dropped down a bit since fifa 20 it took a massive nose dive as this year had a lot of issues of course due to covid that kind of led to the demise of people just not having much of an interest into the sport and this is quite clear as they have to try to bribe people into actually watching their events or by watching i mean in serious large quotation marks as they promise prizes for even being in a live stream drops of this icon or this player it's just a ploy to have people watch the events and i feel bad because the esport players behind us deserve so much better i've actually been involved in these events going down to the e Premier league back in fifa 19 being part of the burnley um e Premier league team and i really enjoyed it i knew the people behind it and i was really into it in fifa 21 i believe i was also the commentator for the e Premier league um uh, playoffs for the burnley team as well and i've met many pro players and sport to them and they spend so much time and money by the so much hard work to be into uh, the, this esport which sadly so much of it is out of their hands one of the most famous examples was back in fifa 20 where due to the servers just completely failing them the two players couldn't play in fifa so to determine who would go for the next round they had to play a game of rock paper scissors in a licensed qualifier later on in that same tournament back in fifa 20 a pro was eliminated from an event despite scoring a seemingly valid goal in a penalty shootout however this goal just didn't register and they got knocked out of the competition and missed out on thousands upon thousands of pounds or dollars that they had deservedly um, had a chance to win the concept of fifa esports is one which sounds like a great fit in principle but the more you think about it, the less it makes sense. It, FIFA, as a video game, is very casual, where you can go play with your friends. That's the foundational core of FIFA. It was made to be a game offline that you could play with your friends and have fun. So all these elements were not bound to fly well with a very controlled and uh, very meticulous balanced world of esports for fifa the problem is its design it's football and you cannot simulate football without an element of randomness 
because simply put you are not controlling 11 players at once you're controlling one and only one technically two if you got second man press or moving a goalkeeper but really that's you controlling one player here okay that's not argue semantics and therefore randomness does ensue and you cannot make a balanced esport while retaining them and due to this it doesn't make for the best spectacle as as you're only watching one player control one person and this means that it's very limiting in terms of the type of different gameplay and different uh, moves that you see at one time when you let's say for example place 10 different esport games in a licensed event in a row you're not gonna find much of a difference in how those games play out alongside that the winner all cost tactics displayed by the pros and quickly finds their way into the core foundational game where tutorials and guides are plastered all over social media plastered all over youtube and therefore anyone that wants to play like a pro anyone that wants to actually try and be good at the game they go to who they know best which is the pros so they go on youtube and type up best tactics and they copy everything that they do this is what we call the meta meta is a word that i despise as what i find meta is the the chore of gaming the leech that has latched itself onto every single game which a game that was meant to be casual and meant to be enjoyable is now a sweat fest where nothing matters other than rewards nothing matters other than winning and what this creates is a just endless boring troll like experience the players have got stats and that leads to a second massive issue fifa ultimate team is a game mode that you have to simply try to create a team of players that has the best stats and ideally the better stats they have the better they perform in game and therefore the better chances that you have to win of course this is not always guaranteed if you put a five-year-old in control of a team of year team and me which has a bronze team i'll still lose to that five-year-old because i suck but if it wasn't me they'll probably still beat the team of a team of year team because they don't know what they are doing that analogy kind of went a bit off the rails but we, 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 we crack on there lads given that stats define everything from the speed of a player's movement and their defensive and offensive abilities and especially when it comes to very key stats like finishing and composure and agility and balance and stamina the higher you go the better that they will perform fifa is not hard at all however to get the elite team and i mean the elite of the elite with the best stats the biggest most off the rails meta players there's a gigantic gap tell me who's a good player on fifa just tell me who you think is a good player um, of course the most obvious one is mbappe right mbappe uh, for simple gold mbappe 1.9 million um, coins that's quite a lot of coins right and that is just a normal one but if you are a pro you need the best you need the absolute best version of, of mbappe otherwise you stand no chance you know who who are you a broker boy you have no chance so you need the next best thing okay the 93 five million coins okay that's just one player well we need a, a full team here so you gotta work your way down you need the best midfield don't you what are you a brokey i mean if you want any of the top level icons i really hope you have you know the five million coins because that's what you need mate you want to r9 and oh, that's eight million coins one player right there boshed by the bing bada boom who else do you want oh you want yourself a, a, a maldini in defense okay three million coins lovely garincha i know that he's a very lovely popular player okay well he's about a million coins but hey he's got this brand new um lovely winter wild cards icon don't know why that's a thing but it is okay that's four million coins mate this adds up and your team can be easily worth 20 to 25 million coins and that's just a standard team like literally just a normal team for any pro player this is a problem as it creates a pay to win mentality that if you don't have a sponsored team behind you then to really compete at a top level is incredibly hard you can either grind a game for life or go into your pocket and with all these special packs in the store makes it 10 times easier for you you go straight into your pocket mate to complete those SBCs. so what we have here is a game which is purely random because you only control one player out of 11 the meta that dominates the game therefore making the actual experience of playing or watching the game feel like a chore because the esports players are doing the absolute most meta tactics possible to get the absolute um, top end of the game which doesn't resemble football whatsoever you you are priced out for even trying to compete 
at this level, unlike if you play, let's say, I don't know, a Rocket League. Rocket League is a game which is an eSport, a great eSport, and guess what? Every single person that plays that game can do the same thing as a pro, because you are all using the same car. Yeah, some cars have different skins, but the actual mechanics of that car is no different to one another. Therefore, you are at a fair playing field. League of Legends, fair playing field. You, you have the Legends, the same, whatever you call them. I don't even know what, what they're even called, but I, ne I never played League of Legends, you can probably tell, but you are at a fair equal playing field. It's your knowledge of the game to learn the mechanics, to learn about the roots and the best tactics. That's what gets you ahead. Here, you can't even get onto that playing field because you have to spend 20 grand to get there in the first place. And then partner that with the inflated numbers into their live streams. And it just feels just unauthentic. And it was always bound to fall apart from the start. It is almost shameless, this kind of bribery-like marketing where the, the drops that you are claiming to win for even watching the tournament aren't guaranteed so you have to leave the stream on for your best chance and so to end off this chapter ea please respect your audience please respect your esports players and sadly for or eafc is simply not an attractive esport for esports fans and if you got to bribe your own community to even watch your events just because they are bribed to get free drops that by the way i've never seen anyone win by the way so in that case if it's not even attractive to your own real life football fans then it's not even attractive to fifa fans so who are you even targeting here and that's the problem so i don't know what the real next step is maybe let the people in the scene have some personality instead of stamping on them each time they try to say something that is somewhat entertaining i don't know what the next step is so that's the end of that chapter so i don't think there's much more to really add to this that i've not already said enough um i thank you for watching this far through this was my video going into everything wrong with kind of modern gaming as a whole recently i just bought myself a, a vr headset uh, the psvr2 really really enjoying it it's like a whole new world to me um and i mean i also love like actual games that i played like rocket league i love f1 i love just racing on there because it feels like you're, you're even like if i go in f1 and I go on time trial, I practice on my, on my rig, or if you got a pad, just practice, you get better. The more time you put into F1, the better you get. The more time you put into Rocket League, the better you get. And you don't need to invest a ton of time and effort to really get far into it. It's simply just your time to practice the game and not your time to get the items, to then get on the same level, to then practice the game. You know what I mean? It makes no sense to me. But tell me your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for being here. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time for another video. Peace out.